Hello, my name is Shana Morpierre, and I will be presenting on the Savesco disaster. Here we have the objectives we will learn over this presentation. Here we have the table of contents. First, we will discuss Savesco as a location, the population, and the culture there. We will discuss the factory where the disaster occurred, the timeline of the disaster, including factors before, during, and after. We will discuss TCDD, short-term and long-term effects the explosion had, studies that follow the explosion, as well as long-term effects and future studies. Savesco, Italy, as you can see from the map here, is located in northern Italy, south of the Alps and 13 miles north of Milan. At the time of the explosion in 1976, there were 17,000 residents. This community is based on strong Catholic traditions and strong familial and social values. This will be relevant for later concerns with the explosion. At 60% of the population worked in small family businesses in furniture design and manufacturing. The ICMESA plant was owned by a Swiss company, Juvedon, a Geneva-based subsidiary of Hoffman LaRoche Multinational Chemical Corporation. Starting in 1971, the company manufactured chemicals to work with pesticides, herbicides, and cosmetics. Now that we are aware of what the plant did, we see here a chemical reactor example used at the time of the explosion. Note that there is no alarm system in place for temperature or pressure, which is relevant to how the explosion occurred. In figure one, we can see the process of the Savesco explosion. There were prior factors leading up to the chemical process itself, which created an environment for such a disaster to happen, including inadequate legislation and an inadequate safety culture, which promoted efficiency over safety. There was poor knowledge of the chemical process and side reactions where TCDD could occur. And as we saw in the previous slide, there are no temperature or pressure alarms in place. The chemical reaction that happened in 1976 was inadequately stopped midway over the weekend. Unexpected exothermic reaction occurred, which created TCDD, and pressure and temperature increased substantially without a warning system in place to notify anyone. The rapture disk burst, releasing an aerosol cloud of TCDD and other chemicals that moved southeast towards Savesco. This directly harmed the Savesco population and environment, but additionally, inadequate information and processing after the disaster also harmed the community. Though it is often expressed as an explosion, it was not actually an explosion, but an aerosol cloud that included different chemicals listed here at an 18 kilometer radius, including 15 to 30 kilograms of TCDD, and in total, 1,500 kilograms of mixture was released. Additionally, an unusual wind pattern for this time of year during the summer helped the aerosol cloud to travel southeast towards Seveso. Figure two shows us zones of exposure and also explains why this is referred to as the Seveso accident rather than the meta accident where the factory was placed. The people of Seveso were most directly impacted by the explosion as the initial wind carried it southwest towards the town. The major observation of the weeks that followed the explosion was the first week had critical missteps that could have prevented future harm. The smell from the dioxin cloud was ignored as the plant had typical smells on a regular basis. There was delays in restricting consumption of contaminated produce and livestock Medical care was delayed, and samples were not tested until later weeks. No residents were evacuated, despite suggestions to do so by local scientists. One of the most immediate effects of the cloud were 3,000 animals died upon contact with the cloud, and in later weeks, 80,000 were killed to prevent future contamination. 
TCDD is explained as a persistent organic pollutant, meaning it takes an extensive amount of time to break down its environment. It is a seven year half-life in humans, can cause cancer, reproductive and development problems, as well as immune system problems and interfere with the endocrine system with hormones and is recognized as a human carcinogen in the International Agency for Research on Cancer. The actual composition of the cloud was not confirmed until July 23, 1976, almost two weeks after the event. At this time, local authorities prepared health checkpoints for residents and more precise investigation into soil and vegetation contamination. Evacuations did not start to occur until three weeks later on July 26. As the local town was contaminated, there were many ideas on how to clean up the contamination. However, none were universally applied. One consideration was to build an incinerator, which the town people directly opposed. Eventually, it was regionally accepted to use soil scarification up to 40 centimeters in depth, and contaminated materials were disposed in basins relocated in Zone A. These amounts totaled 50,000 tons, and the project took four years from its inception in 1977 to complete. Unfortunately, in 1976, there was no method or technology to test for TCDD in the blood at the time of the explosion. However, symptoms like chloroacne seen in this picture here and digestive issues were present in the entire population, but most significantly impacted the children. Here are some long-term and short-term effects of the chemical cloud ranging from the environmental effects to socioeconomical effects. From the day of the explosion, there was tremendous media coverage, even years to follow, which questioned the validity of the care of the people of Sevesco. As you can see here, despite the short-term and long effects I've discussed, it was confirmed that TCDD by the International Steering Committee did not directly show to have adverse health effects. Studies have shown sensitivities to the reproductive system and prenatal development, leading to the Savesco Women's Cohort Study, which was the largest dioxin exposure cohort study for women to this day. Due to the chemical exposure, Savesco women experienced pregnancy difficulties, and birth defects in years to follow. Surprisingly, in a strongly Catholic society, even abortion was considered to try to alleviate the damages of the explosion, once again showing the tremendous effect that this disaster had on its community. From the SVHS study from 1976 to 2016, there was a reported 128 voluntary abortions within the community. Despite the large amount of exposure experienced by women in Zone A, most of the cohort study consisted of women from Zone B, as shown in Figure 5. This unprecedented cohort study allows us to see multi-generational chemical exposure and its effect on genetic inheritance, as well as future generational impact. This cohort study allowed us to view the younger generations that were exposed, which were said to be more susceptible to the harms from chemical contamination, even though there are consistencies and inconsistencies in findings of the impact of TCDD. This chart here shows the pregnancy outcomes of the second generation of Savesco residents. TCDD is thought to impact some forms of genetic expression and the cohort study of the women in future generations is the only study to observe multi-generational outcomes of TCDD exposure. The EU created regulations to prevent another major disaster. This is known as the Savesco Directive, where there were safety measures put in place, legal measures put in place for companies 
to be held liable for environmental harm as well as criminally liable and safety procedures for offshore gas and oil productions as well as classification and labeling and packaging of chemicals. So what do we learn from the Savesco disaster? First, many regulatory checkpoints were created and continue to be amended to this day, including the Savesco Directive and the TSCA, which was created in the same year in, as the explosion in 1976 in the US. We learned how to create a study from a disaster and train professionals on how to act faster and prevent greater harm in a crisis situation. Greater information was learned about TCDD and its effects on generations to come. And we observed the multi-generational impact of chemical exposure and radiation similar to Hiroshima. Thank you for viewing my presentation.